By request, let's take a look at the SH-T11 Super Mega Hyper Head Torch. And this thing is not expensive, which is, when you feel the weight of it, you kind of know why it's not expensive. It comes with instructions. Do they actually? Oh, it's got multiple instructions, loads of languages, as many of these things do. Um, excellent. It comes with a micro USB charging lead. Uh, I'll add that to my huge pile of charging leads. And it comes with the uh, head, the LED headlight band. I'm just going to put this around my head and check it for size. It's going to be hooked onto here, so let me just put it around where it would be. That would feel quite unpleasant, actually. It's, it's definitely not for big heads like mine. Okay, let's put the instructions and the box out of the way. And we'll explore. Now, to give you an idea of the weight of this, it weighs 107 grams, and uh, that equates to 3.8 ounces. And the modes, it doesn't have any dimming. I mean, it's got dimming in the sense that you can have one light lit or multiple lights lit, but the software is very simple in this because if I press the button once, the middle light lights, and it's fairly bright. Uh, if I press it again, uh, the outer lights light, but there's no pulse of modulation flicker. Um, then all of the lights at once, and then it goes into the one fancy mode, which is strobing. Is it strobing all the LEDs? Yes, it is strobing all the LEDs. So initially looking at this, the button and the charge port are in the vicinity of each other. And that suggests that's where the control circuit board is. But that's also, by the look of it, where the LEDs are. So I'm guessing that everything is on one single circuit board. And there's one way to find out, and that is to pop the lid off this. I'm not a huge fan of these because to me a head torch should be lightweight and non-cumbersome. And all I'm really wanting from a head torch, and everybody has their own different uh, opinion of what is better, I want a splash of light roughly at a nice comfortable working height so I can actually work at with the thing turned down to a low level for maximum battery life. We will be testing battery life in this. We'll be testing battery capacity and the current drawing. But I would guess that this is one of these many lights that, uh, oh, it's an 18650. What was holding that in place? Oh, it was kind of held in place. Snug it up against the aluminium heatsink. Um, right. Okay, let's pull this little thing out here. Is that going to come out now? No, nope. what if I just pull this out completely? Is it going to come out now? Not really. Right, so uh, doing very well, yes. Let's put that through this hole. What is holding this in place? There it is. It was the USB connector. So there it is. Everything is on the one circuit board. The lithium cell says 800 milliamp power. I mean, at least they're kind of honest, but we'll put that to the test. I'll give this a full charge and then put it in discharge. And I'll take a picture of this circuit board and we can assess the quality of the circuitry. Um, other than that, it's got the inserted chrome plastic and it's got the the lens front okie dokie i shall start doing the tests and taking the picture in reverse engineering one moment please reverse engineering is complete i just took a picture of the middle bit because that's ultimately where most of the juicy stuff is so we can take a closer look at it Here's the USB port and the charging circuitry is unfortunately the Super cheap type with a J3Y NPN transistor and a 100 ohm base resistor, and then it's controlled by a pin the microcontroller. Not really sure how accurate that will be. We have the charge indicator LED or status LED with a 1K resistor in, in series the green LED. We've got a button for selecting modes, a couple of links jumping over tracks, and then we've got eight. Two A2SHB MOSFETs, each with a 10k pull down resistor, but absolutely zero current limiting through the LEDs. So I'm not really sure how much current is going to be flowing through them. Let's take a look at the schematic. And here is the schematic. So the USB charger is over here. The lithium cell, incidentally, is currently under test. It's behaving quite weirdly. We'll see what actually comes out of that. Um, the charge control is done via this NPN transistor, which has a 100 ohm resistor going to its base to turn it on. And it relies on something in the microcontroller to turn that transistor off by effectively pulling that to the zero volt rail, whereupon current will flow through the 100 ohm resistor and through that pin. It's a very strange thing, but it's commonly done.
not overly convinced about this. We have a decoupling uh, capacitor, we've got the microcontroller, a 1K resistor in series, the green indicator LED, the little button, and then no resistors in line with the uh, MOSFETs, two standard A2SHB MOSFETs with 10K pull-down resistors, and then the LEDs, the large cluster of LEDs, how many are there? There's uh, 1, 2, 5, there's 10 LEDs over here. And then just a single LED, but there's no current limiting. So I'm going to have to, once the cell is finished discharging, I'm going to have to test it again. I'm going to have to connect the cell up uh, onto the circuit board and uh, use the DC current clamp to see what sort of current these actually draw because they are just solidly turning on with no pulsive modulation. So the current could actually be quite high and relying on the lithium cell's internal impedance as these things tend to do from time to time, which I'm not overly comfortable with. But that's what they do. I guess they've done it for so long, they just think, well, this is standard practice. Uh, but anybody designing, shall we say, higher profile equipment might not consider that to be the case. Now, the this is interesting. Let me show you this. Let me uh, bring the chromium reflector in. Let's bring in the louder automotive meter for this. Uh, so it's chromed and conductive on both sides. This isn't uncommon. I mean, it's probably a very thin layer of chrome, but it still is uh, interesting. It's got a higher resistance on the uh, less important side, but they have literally just dipped this into the chroming solution, I guess, after copper plating it. The way they do this, they initially put some conductive coating on it. It could be graphite or whatever, and then they... Uh, Potentially electroplate it with copper, I think. I don't know what the current process is for these. But then they submerge it in the chrome liquid and uh, plate it in the chrome. Um, not a job necessarily that I'd like to do given the toxicity of chrome, but uh, there we have it. It's an interesting reflector, very shiny. Oh, it just made loud. It just made loud crunchy noises. It's not going to do them for microphone. I've, I've ruined the crunchiness. But that is it. So, um... Yeah, interesting. If you go in the description down below, you will find more data, including the capacity that the cell measured and the current it drew in each of the modes. But that's it. A very uh, grandiose light. Very cheap, but more just a sort of sensationalistic light as opposed to a actually functional one that uh, people will find useful at work.